We are Campus Attic. By fans, for fans, where we are huge supporters of Punky Boners. What? She was Oregon's homecoming queen in 1952. Punky Boners. Now, any Duck fans worth their feathers know that Dee Dee Hall was the first building on campus. Villard Hall was the second. But what was the third building? Well, there's an interesting part of Oregon history that gets overlooked, but we're going to talk about it today. The Observatory, up on Skinner's Butte. In 1878, when the university was only two years old, funds were raised for an astronomical observatory. Josh Walton, secretary of the Board of Regions, purchased equipment back east while on a trip to Philly, including a $900 telescope, solar compass, and side reel clock. But where to build the observatory? At the time, Dee Dee Hall was the only structure. Do they add it to one of Dee Dee Hall's spires? Do they create an all-new building? For nearly a decade, it was argued, during which time Villard Hall was built. In 1888, they finally decided. The school bought land on top of Skinner's Butte and built a small replica of the Lard Hall, complete with a retractable roof for views of the night sky. Classes in astronomy and celestial mechanics were held inside, but there were a couple problems for the building that made it doomed from the start. First of all, it was difficult for students to travel all the way up Skinner's Butte from campus. Second, an open roof to the night sky didn't do much good during the school year, when most of the time it was cloudy and raining. In 1890, the school bought Collier House from Professor Collier, located across 13th from campus. Today, it's used as offices for the music department, sandwiched between Johnson Hall and the EMU. At the time, Collier House came complete with a barn, which was rebuilt as classrooms and an observatory known as Barn Hall, where Hendrix Hall stands today. Barn Hall made the observatory rather useless, and it quickly fell apart. In 1897, someone stole the telescope, though it was found a month later in a sack under the crosswalk on Lawrence Street. A year later, the university declared the building was available for, quote, other purposes, whatever that meant. The observatory became a favorite hangout spot for vagrants and couples seeking a little private time. You know, because there's nothing sexier than an abandoned building where homeless people sleep. Interclass battles would take place up there and it became a tradition for freshman classes to tag it with their year. In 1905, the building long abandoned and an eyesore overlooking Eugene, the school appointed the university steward, Lewis Johnson, to dispose of and remove the observatory building without cost to the university. Lewis tried to sell it, but nobody wanted it, uh, so he came up with another solution, dynamite. Around 1 a.m. on May 12, 1905, the city of Eugene was awakened to a huge explosion, blowing the old observatory sky high leaving a wrecked shell like an ancient Roman ruin. The timing happened to coincide with University Day. So later that day, students finished off the last of the observatory with another explosion and cleanup. Some of the remnants used to form an O on top of Skinner's Butte. Ever since then, there has always been an O up there. If you go to the top of Skinner's Butte today, there's a little lookout and a plaque where the observatory once stood. A largely forgotten, but dynamite part of Oregon's past. But one tiny piece of the observatory still remains, and students walk by it every day without noticing. Across from Hendricks Hall, where Barn Hall once stood, behind the EMU, is the UO Sundial. That's it for us this week. Keep checking back. It's always game day.